Okay, we're, we're diving back in. Um, okay, um, can, well, this is our meeting and we have lots to do still. Okay, um, we skipped over, what, what was it? A strategic plan. Looks like it's coming up. Get your mic. Okay, you're on. All right, so um, today we're going to be talking about not trying to approve anything on a strategic plan, but the process of strategic planning so that it sets you up for success in July. So I see that you are riveted. Everybody's paying rapt attention, and I'm assuming that if I ask you to line up from where you love engaging in strategic planning to where you would rather stick a needle in your eye than engage in strategic planning, that you would be all along a continuum. And every time I talk to anybody about strategic planning, they fit somewhere on that continuum. And it's generally because they've either had a poor experience with it or a real exciting experience where they've had a great strategic plan that drove their work. Uh, and so our goal as your staff is to support you in creating such a great strategic plan that really is so clear and drives the work of public education um, so that it's something that you can be proud of and say you've had a really good experience with strategic planning. So we, got, we want to go through um, five, and I say we because I'm looking at Patty because I know that if I forget something this time of day she'll help me. Um, so we want to go through five key points and just briefly touch on why why we believe the system really needs a strong strategic plan. Give you just a little bit of history for those of you that might be a little newer on the board to try and link some plans together. Um, talk about some key components and definitions because that's where we get hung up at times on terminology. Um, show you a process map that we think will really help you with decision making. And then get your input as staff to see what we can help you with for your July session. So talk a little bit about why. Um, I've been around a few years, 37 in education to be exact, and so having worked in four different districts and multiple settings, uh, including here at the State Board, um, I really feel that when there, I, I've experienced, not I feel, I have experienced that when there is a good solid strategic plan, that it really does provide focus and momentum and direction. And without it, it feels a little bit like that old saying, of, um, the Alice in Wonderland, if you, know, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. And um, it's, it's interesting that as I'm out interviewing teachers who have left the system for whatever reason and asking them what it would take to bring them back into the system, the one thing they all mention, and it's usually first out of the gate, and that is, I would work, come back to work if I could work for a principal who had great vision with a plan behind it and the resources to get there. And I have found that to be so interesting that that is really a driving force. And we see that in um, some of the data as well about why teachers leave. It's, it's kind of that lack of vision and leadership. So um, we, we really feel strongly as your staff that having that direction and focus and momentum is key. Really helps set the tone for the future. So if you have a solid vision and then you have resources aligned with that vision, it's a great roadmap and all of your resource um, and strategic initiatives are aligned to that plan. And then uh, finally, we can also seek accountability for, result, for results. And so whether that's through um, uh, financial accountability <laughs> or other metrics, we really can uh, make sure that we are on track for results. So just a little bit of history, and I apologize. I think, I'm not sure if you have this, if not. Um, just a little bit of history. I only went back as far as 2015. I mean, we can link back to, I think, Board Member Cannon, you were here when we had Promises to Keep. And that was, there was some great phraseology and it was kind of a one-page document, but there wasn't any action behind it. So we really didn't have strategies in place, but we had enough vision that it really compelled um, staff forward to, to have something to link to. 
So as you look at the iteration now of Education Elevated, you can see that you might recall those of you that were here with Superintendent Smith, that we held a lot of uh, stakeholder engagement meetings and we had a lot of input. Um, and then the fall of 2016, the board held a workshop and they really got into the strategic plan and popped out some things like um, excellence for each student and education elevated and the goals were adopted back then in November of 2016. And then since that time, you have continued to refine it a bit. But here we are now um, still not, fully, uh, not having a fully fleshed out plan with work plans and action steps. However, if you start looking around spring of uh, 2017, we started presenting Education Elevated with the uh, metrics that you set forward to various audiences, and it really started catching on. And what I found personally as your superintendent, that when I stood in front of a group of superintendents or principals, or I was invited to chambers of commerce and groups all over the state, when I talked about the board strategic plan of Education Elevated, and here's how we'll get there, and here's what we're about for kids, and here are the imperatives underneath that. It really resonated, and they were very, very excited. And, and as your superintendent, I don't want to lose that momentum. And I think it's really critical that whatever words you use, that they know that the board has a strategic direction with plans in mind. Um, it got embedded into the governor's 10-year um, strategic plan that was adopted by the Education Excellence Commission of the governor. Um, we're also starting to see education elevated and some of the goals popping up in LEA and local um, strategic plans as well. So part of this is a mission, and if we think about mission, trying to define these terms, it's what we do and how we do it. So some of the key terms that you've used that might be aligned with the mission is the Utah State Board of Education creates equitable conditions for educational excellence. Currently, those three terms of conditions Educational, ex and educational and excellence are in your current document, and equity that we'll talk about in a minute um, is one of the imperatives and underlying conditions. So really thinking about, again, mission being what we do and how we do it. When we think about vision, that's future thinking. What do we aspire to? So you have a current purpose statement for educational excellence that says the foundation of the Utah public education system is to provide an opportunity for educational excellence for each student. This requires advocacy, focus, and prioritization of effort. Now there are a lot of words in that. And I would just ask you, is that aspirational? Does that compel you to think about where we'll be in five years? And I would, I would submit that you can probably fuss with these words and make it sound a little bit more aspirational and be a clearer vision um, that's not, not, not only easy to say, but really easy to um, hold tight to your heart and say this is really what we believe in as a board. Um, so one of the things that you adopted that we now are reporting on to um, the legislature, in fact, we just reported results uh, on our goal, and this is something that um, is already kind of embedded, and that is uh, when we started talking about our student goals, we looked at data, and we, we had the courage to look at data and say we will set goals based on data. And so in looking at that, we said, you know, we've got achievement gaps in every area, whether it's math proficiency, ELA, um, graduation, and so when we look at every student, meaning groups of students, and we start to compare those uh, groups, we could see achievement gaps, and you determined that we would cut these by a third. You supported that, and so we are. We just reported last month to at, at interim how we're making progress on this goal, and what we know. And there were some very impassioned speeches by education interim uh, members uh, that if we really work to close those achievement gaps, it's higher rates for increase for kids who are in those gaps, and it will. Narrow, not only narrow achievement gaps, but narrow the overall gap. So the measures that we're using currently are in gray, third grade literacy, proficiency in English language arts, high school grad rates, ACT scores, and readiness coursework completion rates. And that is um, CTE um, certificates, uh, industry certificates, AP, IB, et cetera. That's college readiness coursework. Um, I put kindergarten readiness in green because that's now a measure that we're collecting. Whether you choose to adopt that as an additional measure or not, that would be up to you. But I just put it there as a placeholder because that is something new that we're collecting. So Peter Senge is one of my um, educational gurus that I've loved forever. And Peter Senge is um, somebody who works on leadership. He's not just in the education arena. 
But I love what he had to say about um, the gap between vision and reality. So if we think about our current reality, what is the data telling us and what do we know? And then where do we want to get to? He says the gap between vision and current reality is a source of energy. If there were no gap, there would be no need for any action to move towards the vision. We call this gap creative tension. So this is a space we want you to live in in July when you get together for a couple of days to think about strategic priorities and strategies, that there's, there can be some real positive energy and work around developing a clearly defined um, plan. I want to thank um, Barb Fuentes, uh, who is our graphic uh, person and works on social media in our office. She can just whip things together so quickly. And I love this visual um, about think, thinking about through the lens of equity, and when we talk about equity, or at least when I talk about it, I mean ensuring that each student has possibilities and choices for their future because they have the resources they need in the moment that they need it. Um, so if we think about through the lens of equity that we look at what is, how do we do things uh, with mission and where are we trying to get to with vision and then what are the goals that get us there. So I want you to keep that visual in mind. Currently, we have strategic priorities that you have adopted to this point in LISTA, and they kind of fall into these categories. Safe and healthy schools, that was um, a recent one that you asked that be added. Early foundations, and I'm, I'm not using the exact words that are in the plan, but these are the categories. Safe and healthy schools, early foundations, efficient and effective use of resources, effective teachers and leaders, and personalized learning. And that kind of captures a lot of those um, strategies. But we have to have some very tenable priorities that we can link strategies to as well as action plans. So as part of your work in July, you can say these are the right things or we want to shift or we want to add, do we want to delete. If the board gets involved in too many priorities, then you know what happens. Everything gets watered down and you have this really broad, thinly layered strategic plan and nothing gets um, dealt with in, with depth and complexity uh, to move our vision forward. So with each priority then, each strategic priority, you would have strategies. And the strategies would have action steps and timelines um, attached to them. And I will tell you, again, going back to my own experience with strategic plans, this is where a lot of systems fall short. And I won't name the district, but there was a district that I um, was involved with that um, this was years ago. But we spent a year in such amazing work getting to a strategic plan. In fact, um, we spent a Saturday with the board uh, working with students. We brought in students from all over the district and we had them serve as the school board and the school board members act as facilitators with these small groups. And the students tried to craft a vision of what they thought their school should look like and what some of the barriers were. And it was one of the most memorable days I've ever had as an educator. At the end of that time we had, uh, after a year in working on this, we had reams and volumes of input and data. There were surveys to teachers and kids, and I mean, we just, we did so much work. I can visualize the shelves full of the papers, the trees that we killed to do this work. And then at the end of the day, we stopped at the strategy level. We didn't move on to action steps and who is responsible and what resources would we use. And so all of those lovely papers just, they just served as shelf paper. And I hope somebody used them for fuel later on because they, they went nowhere. And I just remember feeling so deflated that the entire staff, just after about 40 of us working on this plan for a year, when we had leadership and a board who said, no, we don't, we're not going to spend time on all those other things, it literally went nowhere. And that's a disappointment. So you can't just stop at priorities. You actually have to put strategies in place, action steps, timelines, and resources. So I'm going to show you a process map in a minute that Tiffany's worked on, and we put some color coding to it. So when you see these colors, we, we understand as your staff that at any time you can weigh in on any part of the plan and say we like this or we don't like this. You are the Board of Education and we work to serve you. However, uh, to help you move along, we color coded it to say here's some things we really, really need you to weigh in on, and here's some things that maybe just as your staff we can do the legwork and then bring it back to you or here's some things that you've already got in place and you might be able to change some words but if you stray too far then we're back to square one and it might be problematic okay so kind of keep that color coding in mind 
So here's the process, Matt, that we we're sharing with you to set you up for success in July. So um, we think about current reality. What, our, what are the challenges and opportunities and strengths and weaknesses? We're bringing to those things to you constantly, whether it's through finance or whether it's through policy and another committee. Those are the things that you talk about as a board. <coughs> When we get to a mission statement, though, if you want to, um, you know, link back to words, um, is that, are those the right words? Well, there, there are certainly some words that ought to stay in there. And a good example of this is that if you suddenly said, you know, I don't like the term education elevated, because I'm sure there are some of you at the table that don't like that terminology. Carol just nodded. Um, but, but that is a catchphrase that is out there, and people have replicated it. It's in the governor's plan. Um, it's, it's people know that that is our strategic plan, and people talk about it. And when I say people, I'm in in all walks. I hear it from uh, people in schools know about it. The legislature refers to education elevated as our, as our strategic plan. Business managers, charter directors, I mean, it's out there. People could, they couldn't even tell you what's in Education Elevated, but they could tell you that Education Elevated is our strategic plan. So if you said, you know, I don't like that terminology. I like, um, I like the term, um, I like the term uh, sage, sage results. I'm totally making that up. Um, well, that, that, like, that's going to really cause second, third level effects. So some things you have to think about, how much do we want to, get into the weeds and fuss with the terms. And the same is true with vision and the goals. And the, the goal, the overall goal and the way we're measuring those goals, if you said, you know, we don't, we don't really care about proficiency and growth, or we're really not gonna measure graduation rates, or we don't care about ACT, we're not looking at achievement gaps, that's probably going to be very problematic because we are now by statute reporting on those goals already. So it doesn't prevent you from breaking those down or adding to those or having discussion about them, but that's a caution that you wouldn't want to stray too far. Something that we really need your action on is to take public, public action on the priorities so that the public is very aware of what are the priorities, those general areas, those tiles that I showed you earlier. Um, those are things that you'll really want to spend some time on in July so that we know that the direction and the priorities that you have when we get over to um, strategies and alignment, and that's, that really gets at how will we get there. If we don't have specific strategies in mind, we'll never get anywhere towards the goals. And you'll notice a shaded green there. We couldn't figure out how to capture this because there are strategies that, that might be something kind of minor that we, you know, we can come up with and we'll continue to work on. We do that anyway on a daily basis, right? But there are some things that you might direct us to do, or we might need to say, you know what, this, maybe we need your vote on, uh, or public action on this particular strategy. So it's kind of in between of maybe board action might be required and maybe not. Um, and then the other things in blue, again, are things that we work on all the time. It doesn't mean you can't work, you can't weigh into them, but you're not here on a daily basis trying to execute. You can direct us to do things, but that's my job as your superintendent to say, who must do what? Um, given, all, given the resources that we have here on staff, Patty can direct somebody from her staff to do things with programs. Uh, Angie can direct on policy uh, if, if a, you've been directed to write a rule or whatever it is. But we don't expect you to be here holding our hand, engaging in the working plans every day. But we need to know your priorities and what the goals are that you've established. So, uh, and then the last part is evaluation. And the board has a very significant role in course correction. So as we bring data to you and we talk about the progress that we're making, you have two really, really important functions. One is to say, what's the resource allocation? Here's our ask this year from the legislature. You've heard Scott say, um, if we don't get this done by August, we're too late. So there's some urgency to s establish priorities so that we can have funding requests put together with that. And then as we continue to report back on progress, it's the board's responsibility to, um, to take corrective action or to, to, to redirect us as your staff or redirect policy or whatever it is if we're not on track. So um, really that's the process map that, that we, would, um, we would suggest that you follow and kind of give you an overview. So this really ends the presentation, but trying to help 
us get clear about what we can do to support you as staff and what additional information or what information you might need to inform your decisions as you come to the July work session. So one, again, thinking about the process you might engage in so that it doesn't feel so overwhelming and getting clear about where you have leverage and what you should be weighing in on and what you can leave to staff to do. So I think getting that role clarity might be really helpful. Uh, and then also given your particular level of enthusiasm about strategic planning, uh, we, we really want to impress upon you as a board that we're counting on you and we believe that the public is counting on you to have a really good solid strategic plan that everyone knows what the Board of Education believes, what you're willing to put your resources and energy behind, and where we're going. So, and I apologize if I got a little preachy, but I, you know, I'm not one who loves the process of strategic planning because it's messy, but I love having a, a strategic and very clear plan that directs us on where we need to go. So, so board members, this is a little bit of a, a pre-treatment I guess you would say, of what, of our experience that we're going to have in our, um, as we roll our sleeves up in in July, and work on our strategic plan. And um, so I appreciate the superintendent and that we're trying to keep the process simplified. There's 15 board members that all have their their own view of what a strategic plan will look like, and hopefully we can come to a consensus early on what. Um, what ours should look like and I think the superintendent did a really good job that the strategic plan is bigger than just our plan this office is dependent on our they need our plan so they can do what we want to do what we are going to require them to do and um, and also uh, Scott will put a lot of pressure on us to make sure we're very focused and I and I'm very supportive of that of the part about um, our legislative ask as we move forward because it it means so much when we speak with confidence on how it supports our plan and how we're trying to move betterments forward and either sustain something or, or bring a betterment into a public education so I appreciate the superintendent's work on here we're not really going to debate anything here but this is just a little preemptive Come on up. I'm sure we've missed something here. Yeah. If, while Patty's coming up, uh, I would also um, just say that Deputy Norman and Tiffany Stanley really spent time looking at other states' strategic plans. And a lot of them were sketchy at best if they had them posted anywhere. But there were some states who had these really great, clearly defined strategic plans. And so you can click on that and know exactly what they're state is about and where they're headed and so there would be a communication plan as part of this and um, uh, certainly some visuals that would really be clear to the public so that they don't have to click and hunt and try to find it but it's really that is the transparent driving force behind our work so that that will be part of the whatever you come up with that will be part of the outcome that we'll work on Deputy Superintendent Norman, um, I apologize for coming up, but I wanted to make sure that uh, that last slide that we had up there was known, that even though you might not have this idea today, if you could email us with some information, because we would like to create an appendices for you during that July meeting so that when you're asking for things to be included in the strategic plan, you do have that information readily available and can go right to it, that um, compendium of resources readily available with data to back it up so that your the decisions can be made with um, data informed and research based. So anything that you can ask between now and then that can help us get this ready for you so mm -hmm. you can have it at your disposal. So I think the request is loud and clear. Please don't procrastinate and that we'll have a better use of everyone's time if you have a, if you have uh -huh. something there. So, okay, uh, Vice Chair Brittany Cummins. I just want to say that the one thing missing is the enthusiasm. Come on, everyone's excited. We're getting ready for hey, July. Hey, they're <laughs> saving it for our next agenda item. <laughs> you know, Superintendent, do you have anything yeah, else? Yeah, I to just close? I guess um, if I could be so bold, just to say, you know, this is what I would do with the classroom of kids. Uh, you know, I used to do the thumbs up, thumbs down, and this is like, eh. So did this help? Doesn't add to your enthusiasm. I hate strategic planning or, um, you know, yeah, I'm kind of where I was before, but it helps a little bit. So see this, 
the room is sparsely attended, so let's see a thumb here. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Plat yes. Plat right. Yeah. Yes, everyone. I want to see it. You know. Say I want honest. Okay. I think once we get there and tune this other stuff out and um, and just focus strictly on the street plan, I think you'll have a different audience and aggressive participation. Aggressive participation. Did your light on? I can't. I can't turn your. There you go. And, and I know everybody wants to move but on. But will you move the microphone to you? Oh. Everybody wants to move on, mostly me. But I have to say, why I have such a hard time with this is I feel like, and this is not supposed to engender a longer conversation, but I just feel like there is a lot of denial and dishonesty in these discussions. And that's why I hate Education Elevated, because if we were truly Education Elevated, we would have the highest funding in the country. We would have the most regard for students. We would have the lowest class sizes. We would have the greatest respect for teachers. That's and our vision. <laughs> and then it's only aspirational to be Education Elevated. We, we, or let's, yeah, in, inspirational, <laughs> Education Inspirational or something. And that's why I, I just feel so cynical about these discussions, and I probably have that mindset. Okay. Vice Chair Brittany Cummins. And I just want to comment to that to keep the enthusiasm in the positive realm, <laughs> is that any company has to be very honest with, with the parameters in which they, they function. And they, if they're going to move, if they're going to grow, they have to have a strategic plan, otherwise they're, they're stagnant. And so as we go through the strategic planning, we can be aspirational as we look at the reality of where we live, what we're doing, and what we're functioning in, but still have those strategies, because if we don't, then we will never build. We will never grow, because we're not aiming towards anything. So, so here's an example of that. I mean, see, this, this is LinkedIn, it's the kind of stuff you see. Yeah, or nice setup, board member Cummins, Amazon. Thank you. How come you don't have Sunrise Engineering up well, there? Well, let's see it. Well, ours is shorter and better than any of those. Well, let's go to your there. website well, and see. That will be embarrassing because we're Yeah, well, we're going to see it, that now. Um, well, I'm excited. I think there's some good stuff that's going to come from it. I'm hoping it's there. Yeah, me too, because it would be very embarrassing. Yeah, I <laughs> okay, so. Our, our. Oh, look at that. Rising to a new level of excellence. Love it. Well, our strategic plan is creating solutions that work and relationships that last. Nice. That's also our vision statement. It's nice. And then we have some little internal process. We kept it simple like some of those big fish up there that you were putting up there. Okay, mm -hmm. is there anything else, Superintendent? Oh, so I, I think we're gonna have a good time. And thank you for your attention. I really appreciate it, you were focused. Okay.